Hi AP World History students, Mrs. Longnecker here, and in today's video I want to talk to you a little bit about claims and facts. Both of these are things that you will need to include in your historical writing. We need to have claims and arguments to build our writing around, and we need to have facts or evidence to support our writing. I find that sometimes students struggle to know the difference between claims and facts, not necessarily in your own writing, you're pretty good at that in your own writing, but sometimes in your reading, in your textbook, or in other sources that you may be given, distinguishing claims from facts can be a little bit tricky. So I want to talk a little bit about each of these and go through some examples that might help you in your reading to separate claims from facts. So a claim is another word for an argument. I like the word claim rather than argument because in our modern English usage, argument makes us think about people arguing, think, makes us think about people being combative, which isn't necessarily what we're talking about in historical writing. So a claim is a kind of thesis-y, thesis-ish assertive statement. You are asserting um, an idea. Uh, fundamentally, at its core, a claim is an opinion. Now, a historical opinion might be different from just a, an opinion opinion, um, but they're still based on a, an author's belief. It may be rooted in things that are true. It should, in historical writing, be what we call historically defensible, right? There should be evidence or facts that support your claim. Otherwise, why are you making it? But the idea is that a claim is something that can be argued for with evidence or possibly counter-argued and argued against. And so claims um, start kind of sounding a little bit fact-based, but they have an implied because element. So let me give you kind of a, a non-history example. A claim that you might make is um, baking bread makes your home smell great. All right, baking bread makes your home smell great. That is a claim. I've asserted an opinion. Now I've said it in a way, right? I didn't say I think baking bread makes your home smell great. I just said it as a true statement. And that is often how historical claims are presented. Um, but, right, we know that my claim statement is a claim because it can be argued for and against. I can argue reasons why baking bread makes your home smell great. I can argue potentially reasons why people don't agree with that statement. And there's an implied because element in my claim. Baking bread makes your home smell great. Maybe I would say because it reminds people of their grandma's house, or it makes people feel hungry, or it's a warm smell that is comforting. Right? Any of these would be um, a way for me to kind of step beyond the initial claim and give a line of reasoning, which we've been talking about in creating thesis statements. Now, a fact, on the other hand, are the details or pieces of evidence that would support a claim. So facts are generally more specific than claims. Um, they can be more descriptive. If you don't always know the exact vocabulary, you can sometimes use descriptive words to create a, a, a more specific fact. You might include specific vocabulary relevant to a topic, proper nouns, names of people, places, or things can be part of a factual statement. Factual statements are not analytical. There isn't a because element, and they usually can't be argued for and against. And I know that we live in this like postmodern, post-factual world um, where people want to argue about everything, and but the idea is that a fact just stands alone. So for example, bread made with wheat contains gluten. Bread made with wheat contains gluten. That is a factual statement. Now, right, if I said that wheat bread is the best bread, that's a claim. But bread made with wheat contains gluten. That's like a, a property of making bread. You can tell that I'm both a little bit hungry today and that I've been baking a lot of bread this summer. But right, factual statements, they differ from claims in the way that we um, use them and the way that they function. 
So in your reading, in your textbook, I would encourage you to look for statements that your textbook author makes that are claims. Right? What are the argument statements that he's trying to put forward? Often these are the topic sentences of his body paragraphs um, within sections of the text. And then what are the factual details that he embeds in those paragraphs to support and prove those claims. Being able to distinguish between those two things is going to make it a lot easier for you when it's your turn to find evidence to support your own claims in your writing. Quick side note about historical writing as we're starting to think about building arguments, building ideas, and using facts. Historical writing, and AP writing specifically, should paraphrase the facts that you find rather than quoting. And that should be your norm. Paraphrasing and putting the facts into your own words should be your norm, whereas quoting should be a rarity. And this is a way that historical writing seems to differ from writing for your English classes. I know that your English class, English teachers um, are teaching you to quote and they want you to rely heavily on the words of the text. And that's a really important skill to develop. But in historical writing and AP writing, especially because eventually we're going to be hitting timed writing, paraphrasing the facts is going to make your life a lot easier because you can say it in your own words and you don't have to shoehorn someone else's phrasing into your own paragraph. It will allow you to fit the facts into your claim a little bit better. And most importantly, it shows a better understanding of the information. If you can reword the facts to fit your own phrasing and to match your claim specifically, it demonstrates that you understand the information rather than just dropping a quote in and hoping that it's right. So as you are reading through your textbook, as you are reading through any sources that we're analyzing together in class, be looking for the claims, be looking for the facts, and be thinking about how you can take facts and evidence from the documents and use them to support your own claims about historical topics. I look forward to seeing some of your work around um, evidence and um, facts versus claims in your next assignment, and I will see you in the next video lesson. Bye, everybody.